Mr. Ann Berenson? Not here. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. DeVoe? Yes. Mr. Jallo? Yes. Mr. Tawari? Here. And Chairman Galtieri? Here. Okay. Sounds so good. It's here on the worry about it. Oh, I can never say it for the pleasure of the agenda. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. to the Franklin Township Clerk at least 48 hours prior to this meeting, and mailing notice to those persons properly requesting to be mailed notification of meetings at least 48 hours prior to this meeting. Okay. Uh, is there a motion to open the meeting for public comments? Second. Okay. Uh, we can do this by uh, a. Uh, we don't have to. You can go all in favor. Okay. All in favor of opening this to the public, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Seeing that there's no public, is there a motion to close the meeting for public comments? Motion. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor of closing the meeting for public comments, say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, um, next on the agenda is the audit review. Mr. Chairman, good evening, members of the board. Pleasure to be here. Andy Hodgelick uh, from Hodgelick and Morrison here to report on the uh, fiscal report for the year ended May 31, 2018. Um, start off, uh, once again, uh, there's a, what we call a clean opinion on the financial statements, so there's no comments or modification of the report to say that there is something that we don't agree with in terms of how the financial statements are reported. Okay, and that's what everyone in that audit world strives for. You like to look for a clean opinion. And we thank you and, kindly. And, all right, well, thank you. Um, in terms of the financial results for the year, uh, the authority had a, uh, another decent year. Um, actually, if you, I don't know if you have your, your copies with you, but the uh, net position increased by uh, 2.6 million over the previous year. Um, so your uh, your financial, you're, you're maintaining a, 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 a good financial position with respect to the authority. Um, there, there are some uh, counting uh, entries that are made on your books uh, based on the uh, pension situation down in, uh, in uh, uh, New Trent, New Jersey. Um, so those are run through your financial statements, uh, but even with those numbers being accrued, uh, you still have a healthy healthy position. Uh, there are actually some authorities that once you actually make those adjustments for the pension system, you know, you'll see the unrestricted go into a negative status in, in some cases, but uh, that does not happen here. So that's a, just again speaks to your uh, uh, your financial financial position. Uh, and actually, you know, if there are any questions, I you know, obviously I'm here to to, to respond, but um, I have no really uh, no no negative comments to make. Uh, we did have a, you know, one minor comment with respect to the. Uh, fixed asset system. Um, it, it wasn't tied in exactly with the general ledger and we like to see that happen. So you just want to make sure your subsidiary ledger is with respect to, to with respect to fixed assets, make sure that agrees with your general ledger, you know, for, for presentation purposes. But it wasn't it wasn't a huge material amount. So it wasn't something that we would uh, you know make a recommendation with respect to. Okay. That's something that I guess we can talk about at a later point in Sure. Okay. Right. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions from the... <coughs> what will be a not so clean report? Just give us some examples so that we can learn. Sure, absolutely. Well, 
the, the, the primary thing we you know, obviously you go through your, your revenues and expenditures. You know, that's that's really the, the, the focus. So if we came across a situation where there were items reported in your in your ledger that didn't agree with say what was going on in the, in the, in the billing system, and there was a disconnect there, that would be a major problem because then we wouldn't be able to rely necessarily on the general ledger for reporting purposes uh, for the financials. And likewise, if uh, if there were expenditures that that were recorded improperly. You know, when we go through, we obviously did do a test sample of what's being reported on your books with respect with respect to expenses. And if we see that things aren't matching up properly, then obviously we say, hey, you know, you got a problem here. You have to revisit your internal controls and make sure that things are being recorded accurately. So it's really, you know, a, a situation where information has to be recorded accurately. And if it is, then, then then you're all in good shape. If things start to fall apart where, you know, things aren't getting posted correctly or timely or what have you, if bank reconciliations don't agree with the general ledger, things like that, then you start to have, have issues. Do you see more more people uh, running Google and Tracks? There, you know, there are, there are entities out there that have difficulties uh, presenting a general ledger that's in, in proof with their subsidiary records and, and in addition to bank records and on that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Sorry, um, I know you mentioned pensions and I just happened to book to page 30 and 31. Mm -hmm. So that's a predictive, it looks like predictive going forward five years. And we go from being in the positive to the negative. And uh, actually, well, uh, Mr. Chairman, that, that's actually an amortization schedule. Okay. That, that's really nothing that um, is, you know, that's, okay. that's not predictive of where you're going with your pension. Okay, pension that's what I want to make sure. Yeah. That, yeah. Again, right. I'm not. Right, that's, that's fine. <laughs> Finances are not mine. No, I got right? you. So, yep, yep. Okay. So you want to make sure that it's not something that we're. Okay. Any other questions? For, not that I want to rush you through this, but I don't yeah. want to hold up. Uh, Okay. And, and just just to your question though, with respect to questions, mm -hmm. you know, with pensions, the amount that the, and you're not alone, this is all entities in New Jersey, the amount that you're paying on an annual basis is not is not in the same amount that's being accrued as what, what your actual liability is. You're, you know, you're not paying, if, you know, if everybody's paying their fair share, your life, pension life, pension bill would be much higher. So there's going to be a day of reckoning, and what, 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 the, what the accounting standard is making you do with your financials is actually book this liability. Okay. Okay. And like I said, in some entities, it actually put, puts them in a negative position. All right. But uh, like I said, there is there is still a disconnect between what you're paying and what you actually do owe. Well. Okay. Repeat that, Lisa. What we're the difference between what we're paying and what? What you you know, if you, if you wanted to be funded 100 percent in the system, you know, there's there's a there's a large gap there. Okay. Uh, so when will the day of reckoning come? You know, it's that's you know. I've heard I, some predictions. I, I you know, Bill will retire by that time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. So I, you know, there's there's some numbers that get floated out there, and uh, you know, in terms of PERS, um, I've heard like you know maybe 2030. I've actually saw something recently that they said that the judges' pension may run out by 2023. So I mean, it's it's coming sooner than you think. And jokes apart, I mean, yeah. do we need to get ready for that? And that's what I'm worried well, about. Well, I mean, actually, I mean. Is it too far for us to worry No, I wouldn't say it's too far. It, it probably, you know, I, I, I was speaking with the executive director and, you know, he's, he's talking about you know, the five-year plan and maybe there is something that you may want to set aside for that for that type of situation. Um, you're not, you know, no one's going to, they're not billing you for it, but, you know, it's it, it's something that, you know. It's sort of like you know that this payment's going to be due in a year, so you yeah. start putting it That's right. Aside. That's right, right. Now, but let, me, let me stress also, I mean, you're not in a terrible position as compared to, say, uh, some towns and, and what have you. I mean, they're, they're in some, some of the, you know, they're, they're a lot further in, in, in the hole than, you know, authority. And, uh and actually, if you, like I said, if you look at your, your financials, what is being reported as a liability is being recorded in here. And like I said, you're not in the negative. So that's actually a really, very good time. Yeah. And I'm sure also, just to clarify, it's not that we took in a significant amount of money extra that we're, I, I believe in the budget, it was we were expecting a debt payment that we didn't have to start paying yet. Is, is that correct? For uh, last year? There was a, a minor principal payment that will kick in next year. Okay. Yeah, so right. I, I, just for the record with the public that we're not trying to take in. No, that's right. Get, yeah. It's that there was a budgeted and versus it will kick in at some point. So. Correct. Correct. Okay. <laughs> and 
for everybody, as the mayor says, everybody in TV land, they, people are nodding their head in agreement at that end of the table also. So <laughs> you can't see their faces, but okay. <laughs> they, they understand that too. So, all right, um, so that's it. I don't have anything else. I, I mean, I looked through this, uh, nothing. Yeah, and, and anytime if there are any other questions, I know, so feel free to reach out. Okay. okay. I just note, Chairman, that yes. uh, you know, on the on the agenda for later, uh, as required by law, is a resolution to accept the audit, okay. uh, which is required to be done within 45 days, which are well within that period. Okay. But it's just just a ratification. So we don't need to do that with uh, with anybody here. We can do that later on. We can do it later. On. So, I don't want to hold anybody. As long as anyone didn't have questions after you had a motion and a second, and there was any discussion at that point, but if there's any, you guys can just do that later. On. So nobody. I mean, did anyone else get a chance to review? I know it's a lot of pages to go through, so I don't think there's anything significant. Okay. And naturally, if you have any uh, questions, clarifications, they can be passed to to me, and I'll work with Andy to uh, to get them answered um, in a, in a uh, quick turnaround. Thank you very much. Thank you. Great to see you. Good to, good to Thank you. you. Good evening. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, you can go home early. We'll try to move along. Please try to stay up here. Still revolving. Okay. All right. Um, did everybody get a chance? Moving on. Then uh, did everybody get a chance to review the uh, working session minutes from September fourth? Yeah. Any concerns? Revisions? Questions? Corrections. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the working session uh, minutes from September 4th? Motion. Second. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Lowe? Abstain. Mr. Jallo? Yes. Mr. Tawari? Yes. And Chairman Galtieri? Yes. Right. You have to give these back, I guess, in one of your normal procedure. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Yes. 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 You want to have a yeah. You want to have a You can have one. That's fine. Okay. And keep one copy for that. And just tell me what number you're keeping. Ten. Ten. Okay. You want to rush Do uh, I give you back this paper? Yeah. This here. And then I'll shred that. Thank you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Any concerns, I questions can. about this? Thank you. What's your number? Seven. Okay. Mickey Mantle. Look at that. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Bo? Yes. Mr. Jallo? Okay. And Chairman Galtieri? Uh, yes. And Mr. Tuari? FK. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
right on professional reports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so first, I would um, like to, um, we have our uh, engineer from CDM here tonight joining us for, I believe, the first time. Right. So I'm just going to ask Howard to introduce himself to all of you um, and just give a quick blurb since um, the commissioners <coughs> only know you by CDM name only. Right. Um, uh, this, I think I was here before you took over okay. or very shortly after. But at any rate, um, the project manager for the Somerset Street Pump Station project. I've been with CDM Smith since 1994, one capacity or another. Um, and my specialty is in wastewater. Okay. Thank, Thank you, for Howard. Howard. Yep. Uh, so Howard will uh, be a regular attendee now since that we're in the active construction phase of, of, uh, of Somerset Street. So uh, call your attention to the, the first report that says the executive summary. Uh, as you recall, I kind of take you through the detail reports. Naturally, you're more than welcome to uh, have any questions about the detail reports, but um, as I've indicated in the past, I want to make sure you have a, that I express my understanding of the projects, where they are, um, and then we can go to the engineers for any specific uh, questions that you may have. So uh, first we're going to start with, uh, you may notice actually there is not a red project on the status report. We start with a color yellow. Uh, and that's relative to the Marcy Street Sanitary Sewer uh, Rehabilitation. Uh, remains yellow, to, you know, to be honest, it just hasn't been a lot of, uh, a lot of work um, done over the last month on this. We are moving along, but this is yellow. We still did not come up with a target date to authorize that to advertise. And that meeting, um, and today, uh, over the last couple of days actually, uh, I've discussed with Joe and Scott, we've scheduled the meeting um, early next week. Yeah, uh, towards the towards the end of next week to have a meeting to go over the final version. The specifications did go to for legal review, and now they're back. Everything is done. There were very minor comments made, uh, and we're going to find we're going to uh, finalize on that, and then work up. Uh, start developing a schedule for this uh, more detailed schedule. But uh, at that point, I would be able to assess. Um, well, what my expectation would be is a is a green color because I would put together a schedule and out of the gate I would expect that deck that color to be green on it on its schedule. Uh, so now um, yes, you are reading it right. We are going to move to Rodney Avenue uh, pump station. I'm going to go in the high level discussion of it now uh, with more detailed discussion in executive session. Uh, but we have turned green. <coughs> With turn green, there will be a recommendation to process uh, the pay, the final pay app, um, a contingent um, proposal made to you. And again, uh, the further uh, the details of that discussion will be held uh, in the executive session. But a uh, significant turnaround and progress made over the last two two months uh, when we were here and we were discussing what was in the executive session, the executive meetings. Okay. On to the asset management plan, GIS. This also uh, went from yellow to green. So again, um, uh, good, uh, a good um, transition plan. Uh, we, the CME has completed the asset management plan and is incorporating um, the final comments uh, from the from the staff manager and our operations manager. Can I take a moment? Uh, sure. Um, on Rocky Avenue, I, I just wanted to. I commend you on your leadership. I think that has helped us. Um, your involvement, your diligence, along with uh, our legal team here. I think uh, we were struggling with it for some time, so it's, it's, it's a good show. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate that, Thank Chair. No, Mr. Commissioner, I appreciate that. Uh, I, again, you know, it's it's no one person. It's always uh, it's a team. And, I have uh, the team that I have here and this, the authority plus the professionals I work with. I think we all kind of uh, got very focused on what needed to happen uh, to ensure that uh, we wanted to ensure that um, both from the sewage authority and then also just from the contractor point of view that that we were getting to where we both wanted to get this to the end to the end gate and we just had to to 
really set our minds on it and, and um, fortunately was able to do that uh, with the with the team and the support I have from from Eric and from Joe and then naturally from my my own team. Mr. no more green clothing? I'm sorry? No more green clothing? No. <laughs> no more green clothing. I'm putting on a shirt. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so relative to the asset management and the GIS plan, uh, we're, we're making progress there. We did turn green. Uh, basically, by the end of the, the month, um, the, the, day I, the, the last day here that I have is that we, we expect to go live on the, uh, the public version of that. So that way, um, anybody logging in at home, and if they have a question of where they live, what street, does it have sewer connections, we're going to provide that information. Uh, the internal version that's used for our uh, the staff web uh, web portal that's been tested uh, and comments provided back by our staff and they're using that on an ongoing basis for for their reports so um, good progress there and like I said uh, we expect um, the actually I did get the link today for the beta version uh, that over the next week I'll be using with uh, my staff engineer to, uh, to validate some of the uh, mostly minor comments I had, but to see that. And then, like I said, I expect that all to be wrapped up and ready to go live on uh, October 18th. Are we going to be, I know uh, Andy had made some recommendations, are we going to be able to incorporate that, incorporate the recommendations easily, or will it take a significant amount of work to, for the asset management versus the, um, the general, general ledger account? So they incorporate because this is GIS and asset management, right? No, it's uh, it's well the asset management plan, right. yes. But uh, I'm sorry, did you say tied to the general ledger? Andy gave me the that they have to uh, that the numbers have to correspond. So we yes, yeah, so we are upgrading the asset management plan. Does have the financial aspect to okay. it? Okay. Uh, so yes. So we'll be able to incorporate their feed, the auditor's feedback. So. Right. We are planning on incorpor we are planning on taking that. Uh, okay. the, the detailed implementation of, of that has still yet to be worked okay. out. Okay. Scott, also have you had any more connections and connection issues in the field? We have not. Okay. So it was just it might have just been a service. Could have been something that Verizon was doing. Okay. Um, as far as I got a brief update on the township wide I'm not gonna go into it because it's still very uh, it's going to be a little ways out. It's a little different than what I thought, but it's still something that would benefit us. Uh, the, uh, Brian will be receiving more information as it proceeds, but it still has to go through the IT steering committee, so they haven't even. I just got a quick update because I happen to be in the office. So, okay. You, as as it comes along, you'll get more information. Wonderful. Thank you. Yep. All right. So, uh, Foxwood Drive. Um, it is, is also green. That's been pr proceeding on schedule uh, pretty much from day one. And um, because of the, the original scope, we, we don't see the damage uh, um, to, the, to the laterals and to the, the amount of um, lining that we thought we had to do. So we were able to um, bring in uh, Churchill Avenue into, this, into the scope of this to do uh, TV cameraing on that and assessing that, and we expect within the uh, within the budget as allocated on, on the contract to be able to, to to line to perform some of the lining on Churchill. That that work started three days ago, two days ago. Yes. Yeah, actually, and uh, I, yeah, and I was actually out on the truck um, uh, watching them do that. So uh, Churchill has. Uh, asbestos uh, lining uh, pipe that was put in, I think it was 1965. So because of its relationship to the li its line to um, Shirley Avenue pump station, um, it's it's been wearing down. So we're in a good position where we can also um, use the uh, use the savings that we're seeing in the area that we originally scoped to be able to take, to bring that in and take care of that, which obviously is a positive. So again, um, all that is is, um, is is moving along. Also, we did receive the official extension uh, for six months, uh, out, but it's actually more than six seven. months. Yeah, seven months to the end of July. Uh, to, the end, to the end of July. 
Uh, so we're in good position in there because at this point, our target date of wrapping up is sometime in March. Yeah, March. yeah. so um, so that that's good. Again, solid green on to, on target. Um, Hamilton Street. So this, uh, if you recall, um, it was green last month, still is green, but I've gotten back uh, draft early version feedback from the cultural survey. Uh, if you recall, because of some concerns that the, of what they were found on that site, that the initial feedback is we will not we will not be required to to go to another level of survey. And now what they found, they'll be able to wrap up their report, and we'll be able to uh, uh, at this point not anticipating uh, any impact to the schedule. Uh, the legal review also completed of the Hamilton um, the Hamilton Street pump station. Uh, that was completed on September 19th, and this, you know, we're on schedule to hit the advertised the bid uh, for February of 2019. So again, green there, uh, no issues. For this project, uh, and I don't know if you know the answer off the top of your head, the, are there any roads that will be impacted that were ripping open, that were paving or anything? And you can get that at a later date. You don't have to have that right now. So we are. We are hitting out. I mean, that, yes. that is correct. Well, That's yeah. the only municipal yeah. road that will be affected is Hamilton, Hawthorne, uh, uh, at oh, the intersection of Hawthorne. Yes. Okay. So, so it's very minor in scope. Great. So that's because I just wanted to make sure that we don't put it on the paving schedule. But that's fine. If we're not impacting that much, that's even better. Yeah. Hearing that. At Hamilton, we talked about doing that tunneling. Correct. Right. So yeah. to really reduce the, the uh, like closing down completely the road, there's the technology which sounded really neat to me. So I'm gonna be out there, uh, out there watching that. Okay, good. All right, and now to um, our most active uh, construction site, the Somerset Street Pump Station. Again, this color is green. Uh, we've made really good progress <coughs> over the last, uh, since our last uh, meeting on the force main work that's being done on Brookline. Uh, it's progressing on schedule. I was out at that site yesterday. In fact, if we have a couple of color photos, so the uh, the first one is a photo of uh, this is at the very tail end of Brookline uh, by the pump station, um, and they're in a they're in a, a trench here that is about 14 feet deep. Oh, 16. 16. Okay, 16 feet. And they're they're laying the you'll see the one guy he's standing on the manhole that they're putting in and they're aligning the one um, the the one sewer line um, uh, that that's being connected um, to the to the manhole. So there's very neat uh, work, um, and they're made uh, that day. They've actually made the turn uh, towards. There was another two lengths of pipe that was put in in addition to the length of your checking here. Additionally, the next page you'll see is you're looking at the parking lot of the bus station that's on Somerset, Joy, Joy Bus, Joy Transport. Joy Transport. Um, where, where you see the guy in the orange uh, kind of cutting, that portion of that parking lot is being, is being disturbed. There's going to be a manhole that goes in there. Uh, Scott's been in touch with the owner and with the, the company along with uh, um, Howard and, and their project manager, Dean. So everyone is, um, is well engaged in communication, aware of where we are, um, and as best as, as um, the right now, um, they're all happy with the progress that they're seeing and being kept up to speed. So uh, we're making good progress here. Would, ex would expect that we're going to be completed on Brookline sometime, you know, well, uh, actually they're done. They made the turn into the pump there. This afternoon they started uh, completing of the uh, force main installation as well. Right. Okay. Which is only a couple hundred, a maybe a couple of feet from the pump station. Scott? Yes, sir. Um, this is 16 feet deep, right? I'm sorry? This is 16 feet deep. Correct. Uh, is there any the safety concerns about caving and all that that happens to a lot of my contracts construction yeah so we so i did talk to uh to dean on that and when you're out there it, it's really hard to tell but this shale 
like is very firm. So they make the assessment based upon, and, and Howard and Scott, I'm sure, could talk to this uh, much better than I could. But basically, that was my first question was, okay, it's because of the shale, and you could see it's very solid. Now, when they actually made the turn, they did use uh, support, a trench box on it because the consistency, and that's probably not the correct term to use, but the consistency of the soil was not as, as strong as it was here, so they did follow and put in a trench box when they actually made where you see the yellow um, uh, joist there or whatever it is. Uh, when they continue that, they put they put the who, trench who box. Who makes in. the call that it's safe? That the shade is safe. Contractor. Who makes that call? Contractor. The contractor does, but he should have a health and safety person right. that That's he can point. refer to. Right. We are ultimately liable for if something happens. Right? You've got to be very careful with that. Yes, so I, I'm going to I'm going to call Ralph, who's the contractor, and, and make sure that he is involving his health and safety guy in the field, so that they're they're directing the work yeah. right mm -hmm. i mean i can sympathize to the sides being uh very rigid you know because yeah. the shale does yeah. get yeah. Right. much much more like rock it's not necessarily yeah. rock but the further down you go right. but there was discussion so this was not because i actually spoke to um to dean our project uh, we worked directly for howard uh, to have that conversation so there was an active discussion about this and the assessment made and then later on in the afternoon the determination was, hey, we need the trench box. The trench box was you. So I am very confident in their ability to to make these assessments versus you know a software guy who sat in a telecommunications for, for 20 plus years. And you took the picture at the wrong time. <laughs> so actually I didn't, so we can blame Dean for that. <laughs> um, uh, for the actual photo. But uh, overall, I, you know, I did want to show you the work because I know um, when I sat where you sat, I didn't always get out to the construction sites, you know, just didn't have time, but this is moving very well and I'm very uh, happy with the progress uh, that's being made, so made on so the set. the pump station I'm assuming then the work? Uh, they have to finish the work through the bus company, joint okay. transport, and then I think they'll turn their attention to the pump stations. Now, during the digging up of, um, of the material on the soil on Brookline, um, there was a amount that was um, deemed contaminated. And um, Howard, actually, if you could just explain in a few sentences of, of you know, the contamination that it wasn't tied to the sewer line yeah. or any um, anything from the sewer it's, line. It's not it's contamination from the standpoint that something leaked. Mm -hmm. It's New Jersey over the last several years has come out with uh, guidelines for the disposal of material that come from your what's called a linear construction project and the guidelines are essentially meant to address where you're running adjacent to or through a prior contaminated property but the levels that they've established for guidelines um, are extremely low and in the case of arsenic which is pervasive in New Jersey uh, it's really hard to meet so I would say it's not clean. I wouldn't say it's contaminated, right. but it cannot be disposed of just anywhere. You got to take it to an uh, appropriate facility. The contractor refers to it as a manifested facility, uh, and in our case, it ended up being a place in Pennsylvania. Right. So when the contract was originally done, um, there was set aside twenty thousand um, dollars on that line to handle that. Well, due to the fact that um, it's not as clean as originally um, hoped for. Uh, we've had, we're, uh, Howard asked me to do a uh, work change directive, so we're basically moving some monies within lines, so that way it can cover the cost here. We're still within the cost of the contract, uh, so I'm, I'm not coming back and asking for a contract, but I did want to make you aware of the fact that we ran high on this, we're doing some line items on moves. Um, right now, with the assumption of that if we continue to find the soil, uh, the dirty soil, and remove it at the same rate, we'll be fine, uh, which we doubt it will be because we're already at the end of, of Brookline. So uh, we should be in good shape of not not, uh, not exceeding that amount. So we're not going extremely deep on this pump station, right? It's not like a Rodney Avenue. Well, well not you're, 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 you're going to be, you're gonna be gonna pretty be, deep. Yeah, we're going to be down 20. Not 20 the physical station, but the wet one. Yeah. So okay. for, for some of the material that I've talked to the contractor about, which won't be foundation material, but it would be fill around the uh, 
structures we're going to look to try to reuse as much of the material as we can but you can see right. it's very rock like uh, not great backfill material so okay. we're going to do the best we can to reuse as much as we can right um, also uh, and I'll discuss this more in executive session um, there was a resident that um, that after we did some comp compaction on the line as we were putting the line in on Trenchwood, uh, one of the residents um, had some water flooded their basement. Um, they filed a report and we'll discuss uh, further of that in executive session. I don't know, Howard's looking awfully confident. What do you got from? <laughs> oh, very happy right now. Right. Good. So, you know, over in the last, uh, you know, since I've been here, I, I think you've seen a uh, nice transition on on these uh, color alerts uh, in my assessment of that. They are moving in a much more, um, in a much better way that I'm happy with the, the results of this. Naturally, uh, we still have some work to do on, on a number of these projects, and there's still, you know, plenty of work to, to be done on Somerset, but I believe at this point, uh, given that you know, with the the, the relatively soon completion of Rodney, um, that you know, this is this is all um, in very very solid ground right now. All right. So again, any uh, any questions you have on the detailed reports uh, from the con uh, from the contractors uh, from the engineering firm, please feel free. Let me know. Uh, but basically, uh, again, relative to all the dates that we're concerned about, we really have moved where we have uh, you know, five, five green projects and one yellow. And my expectation is to come back um, in November and have the Mossy project uh, also uh, green. Hamilton Street, where did we leave off with, um, there was a waiver requested from the county. Where did we leave off with that? So we haven't heard back from them. Uh, they actually denied the oh. waiver, okay. um, and we're putting the responsibility oh, right, of yes. the uh, performance guarantee in the contract for the contractor to post that uh, during construction. Okay, so that'll be part of. Okay. That's best. All right, so I'm going to move on to the executive director's report. All right, it says you know, October of 2018. Okay. So attached, you'll see the uh, the revenue the, the revenue report for uh, September 2018, uh, documenting our sewer rents and connection fees that we've collected along with interest and some uh, miscellaneous uh, revenue, and then relative to the fiscal fiscal year to date, uh, as we are on the fiscal year. So nothing outstanding or concerning from that report. Uh, moving on to the expenditure report. Uh, this right now just lists the expenditures of the month and the year to date. This report will be updated with the appropriations with a column that starts that states the appropriation. So that way we have a, we have a better understanding of how percentage wise of where we are, what we're spending to to the um, to the uh, appropriation that was done in the budget. So this really is helpful in, this, in the sense of that you understand the expenditures. Next month's report will have it updated to include the uh, budgeted amount, the appropriations in the, uh, in the budget that was approved. Uh, again, nothing, nothing alerted here. Relative to our cash balances, uh, you know, here there was one minor change that we made in the report. Uh, and that's on the line of the revenue fund, which is in the Bank of New York accounts, uh, 1020. Uh, that money was listed as unrestricted. Um, and in, in a discussion with that I had with um, the Bank of New York, and based upon the way our, um, our audit report has it, we've moved that money from being labeled as unrestricted to, to restricted. Um, so I no change in the net balance, but in the allocation of it, in the classification of it. Uh, so, and that was done again based upon uh, what was described to us or, or dictated to us based upon our audit. All right. So again, cash, 
cash balance, as Andy indicated, is, is uh, we're, we're in good position. All right, so on to the discussion items. Um, the first one, I, as you as you participated in, the uh, the uh, audit is is available in draft form, uh, Andy indicated, and later on in the evening we will have a resolution for you all to uh, to approve that. The development agreement, I, I've mentioned to you a few times that I am in the process of updating the development agreement. Um, we're, by the end of this week, we will have a copy sent to, uh, to Eric for review. But the most significant update in that is, is a change that I've, uh, I'm in putting in, is that when, if in the future, as part of a uh, private development, that pump station is deeded to the uh, to the attorney to the authority as it has been to the attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, in lieu of payment, <laughs> he's going to get a pump station. Um, I'll tell you which one. Yeah, he'll tell me what to do with with my pump station. So um, it has been practiced um, uh, for quite a while in the authority for those pump stations to be deeded to the authority uh, because we do have the maintenance staff and the expertise to, to mount. But what I'm assessing now is that that's going to come with uh, a maintenance bond or a fee uh, that I want to put in for the development group. Naturally, all my suggestions and proposal, once they go for legal return review, will be presented to the board for their, for their approval and certainly uh, any discussion on the comments. But the reason I'm doing this is that we have um, we have staff that goes to the pump stations each day, and there is maintenance performed on that. So as we keep on taking on um, pump stations, that's further extension of our staff. So I think it is only fair to the authority that we accept or require a maintenance bond uh, deposited on 20 for 26 years, and that rate. Uh, is based upon $2,500 for 26 years to come to a total of $65,000. So why do we use 26? We use 26 because our, our friends, the um, uh, Franklin Township, that's when we reached out to them and talked about how do they handle, um, how do they handle uh, drains, uh, stormwater drains, um, uh, retentions. Uh, that's how they handle it. They do it on 26 years. So we're trying to, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, just trying to use what's already been done in the township. So they went with a model of 26. The fee with, for $2,500 a year was really based upon what we charge uh, the Board of Ed uh, for, for, the, um, for the maintenance that we perform on the pump station at the high school. Um, slightly increased for um, 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 since that model, but uh, it's based on, it's not guesstimates, it's really just tied to what's already being being used uh, in the field. So this is the most significant update. There are other updates that are in there, some clarifications um, on the document. The, the major, the other significant reason I'm doing it is, right now we get development agreements that sometimes have been modified uh, actually deletions made to it by the attorney that turns it in. They download it from our site or they get it, and then they delete the sections they feel that don't apply to them. This obviously is not a good model to use. So the model we're gonna have is such that um, any changes or additions, the comments that they need to add into it, there will be um, sections there for them to enter it in, but they will not be able to to modify, delete um, sections. Uh, so that way I get to a place that if the template, if the model is used, the de development agreement is signed without any significant changes, you know, it doesn't need to go to a legal review because it's already been through a legal re review. Um, and then I also know that it is the document that our attorney has blessed and given approval for, and I don't have to worry about some other attorney modifying it for the interests of their client versus the interests of the sewage authority. So it will be under, um, I mean, I use the term change control, it will be under document control. Um, so that way, again, we know it's, it's the document that we authorize to be signed. Um, 
So, so that's uh, the development agreement update. Um, the I'm just going to skip to the Hamilton Street uh, 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 pump station funding. So I've spoken to our bond attorney uh, on who who we're going through the process of financing, and she basically said, "Hey, um, you at this point you either need to get an indicative rating." or a full re rating from like Moody's or one of the other firms that do it. Uh, Moody is the first one that comes to mind. Um, now, her, she said that uh, if you are going to go to loan, you're going to you know finance in the future any potential project, it is probably best to go for a full rating versus an indicative rating, which has a short, shorter term life. Um, and Given the cost, she said that you can get a full for under fifteen thousand. Whereas if you get an indicative, you're going to pay seventy-five percent of that cost anyway, and it's only good for a uh, two-year period. I think she said. So based upon that, uh, you know, I just wanted to let you know that I plan on uh, moving forward with with her to get a full rating. So that way we have it for a five-year period, um, and will constantly be reviewed based upon our need and uh, reevaluate without any additional costs uh, to the authority. Can you, now that your assignment it's quick in my head, can you just double check that we didn't do this? You did, yes, I, I did, uh, Commissioner, sorry. Okay. So I asked her, what was our last one? It was an indicative one. It was, okay. Yes. Yeah. Because I remember, because I remember it had yep. to go to Moody, but okay. Yes, yeah, because I, I that was the exact conversation I had with her. I said, I thought we did that, and that's when she, educated me more on the type okay, of rating we had. I didn't realize there was something called an indicative, indicative and then also a full. So, okay. um, so yes, that's been taken care of. Uh, relative to the authority security update, just want to kind of let you know that uh, our authority employees will um, complete the badging process by October 15th. Dates have been scheduled with the township to go over uh, and get badged. Uh, there are some other comments here that obviously because of the nature of security you can read if you have any questions about it You can uh, discuss with me, but we are moving forward on uh, continually updating the security of our of our uh, physical place and also um, the security for our employees uh, relative to the uh, the higher new hires I we will talk about this in executive session uh, but basically, we have two positions that I'll be talking to you about. Some of that information is here, and again, we'll we'll discuss that more in executive session. Oh, resolutions turning over. Okay, so tonight you will see uh, um, the following resolutions: one for a release of a performance bond uh, in the amount of three hundred ninety-six thousand seven hundred twenty dollars. Uh, again, this is to uh, all the work has been done and completed, and now it's just releasing the bond, the performance bond, the cash bond uh, has actually for this been released about a year ago, but for some reason the actual physical performance bond was not uh, was not released. Uh, we're going to have a resolution for uh, the rate amendment, uh, as you recall, the uh, the commissioners uh, a number of years ago. Um, implemented um, a, role, uh, a standard increase uh, that relative from a resolution point of view that completed at the end of last year or for, for this year and does not carry into next year so for a 3% increase that's what this rate is reflective of a 3% increase uh, from the current rate of 312 moving into 321. Um, as a comment to this, I, I, I do want to let you know that my goal is to next year is to not have an increase. I want to make sure that uh, I'll have time to look at the budget, our, our resources, working with our financial plan planner to, uh, to do our best to, to not present a rate increase to our uh, rate payers next year. How do we communicate the real changes to people? So we will have it advertised on our website, um, and then we will also uh, have a with the with the billing a mail mailing will go out. But at this point, we do have it advertised on the website. I am looking at some alternative um, um, methods uh, relative to. Um, potentially adding email, uh, I need to work um, 
more with the IT folks from the town to, to see if we can um, take advantage of some of the structure they have in place to be able to improve our communication uh, relative to that. But one would be for that, yes. So uh, at this point, uh, it would be on our website. Yeah, I don't know one, but two months ago, I had a question about IT pages, and you had just come up on board, and you were kind enough to take that think about it, and, and, and to some extent, hold on and not to increase the rates. I think that's what you're saying today, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. So this yeah. was, I think we had discussed this at the April or May meeting yeah, that we so were projecting it for next, mm -hmm. for in starting November to go in, and then we would try to, I think we sent a notice over to the municipality to mm -hmm. put in the foyer or the entryway, and I think here, so this is the goal of, this is a formal, we, we realized there was a, uh, Brian realized there was a gap, Brian and April realized there was a gap, so they were closing the gap, and then again, the goal is to look at the budget and assess it, so. Yeah, um, and I believe you, this is really just a continuation of the way the the original intent of the, the resolution, but it didn't, the way it was written up when you actually read it, it was like, oh, yeah, it kind of missed mm -hmm. this year. So that's why um, we'll move forward on it, but my goal is to not have a rate increase next year. Okay. Or certainly, if anything, a minor one. And that's why I want to also clarify from the audit report with this coming in that we did not have a significant cash yes. balance because of right. falling in a lot. It's because we didn't have to have a debt payment. Right. That and that debt payment will be significantly increased next year. Correct. <laughs> Okay, um, so you will also see a resolution uh, to purchase some items in that or have been documented in the capital plan. Uh, again, a, a camera uh, for basically Scott and the team. Um, not to take selfies. This is a camera to, to go into uh, when they're out in uh, when they're out doing their work, the cameraing and TV work um, in the sewer lines and the laterals. Uh, also, a um, a resolution to to advertise for bid for for again uh, items documented in the capital plan. We'll talk a little more about about C and D in the executive session, uh, and then finally a resolution as noted before to adopt the audit for the fiscal year uh, June first, twenty seventeen to May thirty first, twenty eighteen. And as I indicate, there will be a number of items uh, that we'll talk about in executive session. Um, we've touched on most of them already, uh, but there are a number of them. Okay. So with that, um, Mr. Chairman, I am. I have completed mine. Um, I have actually spoken to to Scott, and because of the time and the fact that we are going into executive session, um, I ask that you just. Uh, read um, Scott's operation report. We're going to pass the uh, him walking through and talking about it in the, in saving the time. And, and Scott has so graciously agreed to uh, pass on his uh, pass on his. Time. There were no safety issues. For that. No. no. Okay. Uh, the only question I have is: I know you were still working on the longer term capital plan. Have you had, I know you've had like three of the five years concluded? Yes, so I, I, I have not made any progress okay. on that. My guess is, uh, to be honest, uh, that probably is a, um, probably a mid-November-ish uh, time frame, given, given some more of the immediate needs. I, I really do want to spend some time, I've scheduled some time with the order to, to go over the order uh, in more detail. And also, I want to turn my attention to a better understanding of, um, of our cash flow and our financial status as it is. So I'd like to get a better understanding of that before I move into, and given we have time um, for that capital plan, I'd like to, to get my foot there. Because that will also help me understand what I can tee up for the capital plan. It's kind of, you know, I can tee up a lot of stuff for the capital plan, but if I really don't have the better understanding of where we are with um, our cash cash management plan um, and and the audit, um, uh, I, I feel that that's the best way to do, do, do the due diligence. Okay. Then we can uh, regroup them. Maybe we'll see where we're at in, uh, at maybe the December meeting, just to get a rough idea, if possible, to the uh, commissioners. That's the sure. Way. We yeah. can start thinking also. Okay. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, moving right along. Well, first off, does anybody have any questions for the executive director? No. Any questions for operations? Okay. All right, committee reports. Oh, um, not part of the operations report. Scott forgot to mention it that. Um, his son scored a touchdown in the uh, last, last Friday mm -hmm. on the new turf field that his high school Donovan plays on. So mm -hmm. it's not part of his operation plan, but I thought it was of note to interest. Congrats. It's historical. Sure, that's exciting. So congrats. Thank you. All right. Uh, negotiations and personnel. Nothing really for this. Uh, no, uh, uh, yeah. So yep. uh, I would like to meet with the per schedule meeting with the personnel. Uh, that will become a little more evident after our executive session. Okay. We're probably going to turn back to me in a second. <laughs> and uh, already four o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's nothing significant to report. Uh, there was discussed at public works, which you had already discussed about the issue. So uh, the town's aware of them. Um, uh, I also mentioned the Wi-Fi. So other than that, been quiet. So moving right along. Uh, construction, good. Uh, safety sounds like we were we had a good month. Yes, sir. All right, moving right along. Consent agenda. All right, we'll try to. All right, so all of the items listed below are considered to be of routine nature, thereby requiring one motion and one second for all items. If any member wishes to remove an item from the consent agenda, please advise me at this time uh, which resolution needs to be handed separately, and then we'll address them going on them separately. So we have payroll uh, for uh, with one hundred twenty-one thousand four hundred seventy-two dollars and twenty cents. Operating expenses for account for one hundred seventy-one thousand six hundred five dollars and twenty-six cents. General fund of $147.25. Renewal of replacement $406,802 and one penny. NJEIT construction fund for $814,855.27. And the escrow account of $2,075. All right, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? Second. 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 Mm -hmm. right. Roll we'll call, please. Mr. Bennett. Yes. Ms. DeVoe. Yes. Mr. Jallo. Yes. Mr. Tawari. Yes. And Chairman Galtieri. Yes. Right. Okay. Additional resolutions. Uh, so we'll need a motion for each one and a vote for each one. So, uh, is there a motion for the resolution releasing the performance bond number? Zero three nine six seven four nine. The amount of three hundred ninety six thousand seven hundred twenty dollars to Cal Sterling Franklin LLC Sterling Property Group, relative to Block Five Hundred Seven Twenty Seven, located at Western Road and Cedar Grove Lane. Seven motion to approve. Motion. Very so. Okay. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Mr. Bo? Yes. Mr. Jallo? Yes. Mr. Tawari? Yes. And Chairman Galtieri? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion on the resolution for a rate amendment uh, of prevailing rate user charge effective November 1st, 2018, with payment due February 1st, 2019, of a user charge per unit yearly rate of $321? and the senior citizen for a unit yearly rate of $273. Okay, is there a motion for the resolution? Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. DeVoe? Yes. Mr. Jallo? Yes. Mr. Tawari? Yes. And Chairman Galtieri? Yes. All right. Uh, 
right, next up is, uh, is there a motion for the resolution authorizing the executive director to sign and or execute a purchase agreement with EnviroSite for $9,575 for the, and zero cents for the VeriSite Pro 200 foot push camera with digital viewer recorder? Okay. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. DeVoe? Yes. Mr. Jalo? Yes. Mr. Tawari? Yes. And Chairman Galtieri? Yes. yes. All right, is there a motion for the resolution authorizing the executive director to go out to advertise and bid for a new mechanical style train truck body and traffic? Motion. Second. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. DeVoe? Yes. Mr. Jallo? Yes. Mr. Tuari? Yes. And Chairman Gautier? Yes. Okay, the next one's the, the, for the audit uh, report. Is there a motion for the resolution to accept the audit and review certificate for fiscal year June 1st, 2017 to May 31st, 2018? Motion. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. DeVoe? Yes. Mr. Jallo? Yes. Mr. Tawari? Yes. And Chairman Galtieri? Yes. Six signatures? Please for signatures if there's an eight signature. There's an original at the end of the table, oh, and all okay. the commissioners should sign that before leaving tonight. All right, just remind me, there's a whole stack of papers all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> okay. Um, now on to executive session. Um, is there a motion to open executive session? To go in to, to go into executive session. Do I have to read this statement? I'll oh, oh, oh. put you. something on the record before you ask for the motion. It's it's under the Open Public Meetings Act. You'd be asking for a motion go, to go into executive session under 10 colon 4 12 B to discuss a few items, namely under the personnel, under the attorney client privilege, and under the pending and or anticipated litigation exception. Uh, we there may be formal action taken at the conclusion of the executive session when we go back into public. Anticipated time be 25 to 30 minutes. Um, and any materials to be provided to the public will be released when it's permitted under the law. That being said, is there a motion to go into uh, executive session? Motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Bennett? Yes. Ms. DeVoe? Yes. Mr. Jallo? Yes. Mr. Tawari? Yes. And Chairman Galtieri? Yes. Okay. 